Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we observed the concept of restoring division. In this session, we are going to learn about the implementation of restoring division. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will observe the implementation of restoring division. Now say we are performing restoring division method and we have chosen a dividend that is 10110 and we have also chosen a divisor that is 11. Now 10110 of binary is actually 22 in decimal and 11 of binary is 3 in decimal. So let's perform the division now. Now since it is a 2 bit divisor, when we start the division procedure, if you observe, this is 1 bit. Now, if we subtract 2 bits from 1 bit, it is going to be a negative result. Therefore, the subtraction is not possible. So, we are going to place a 0 in this place. Now, for this 0, we get to choose these 2 bits. Now, although these 2 are 2 bits each, however, this is 1 0 and this is 1 1. Now, 1 0 in binary is 2, whereas 1 1 is actually 3. So, if we perform the subtraction, the result will again be negative. Therefore, we need another 0. Now, we get to consider these 3 bits. Now, definitely from 3 bits, we can easily subtract 2 bits. So, this time, we will place a 1 in here and the subtraction will now be performed. Now, this is 101 which is 5 in decimal and this is 11 which is 3 in decimal. So, 5 minus 3 will actually result in 2 which is 10. Now, after we obtain 10, we are entitled to another bit that is this one. So, let's bring it down. Now, we again have 3 bits and from 3 bits, we can easily perform subtraction of 2 bits. So, we will place 1 in here and now we can perform the subtraction and the result of the subtraction will again be the same that is 1 0 since we were subtracting 1 1 from 1 0 1. Now, after the subtraction is performed, we get to bring this 0 down. So, let's do that. Again, we have 3 bits and from 3 bits, we can easily subtract 2 bits. So, we are going to place 1 in here and now we can perform the subtraction. Now, 100 in decimal is actually 4 and 11 is 3. So, 4 minus 3 will result in 1. So, this is the remainder and this happens to be the quotient. And we already are familiar with the divisor and the dividend. Now, in the previous sessions, we already have seen these are actually the partial remainders. They are basically just the parts of the running remainders. Now, why we are calling it running remainders? Observe, we started off with the dividend and we kept on subtracting the divisor until we achieved the remainder. Therefore, the dividend eventually is going to get converted into the remainder after we are done with all the subtractions of the divisor of different times. So, this one is actually 01010 and this running remainder in reality is 00100. Let's now observe the implementation. Now, observe the number of bits in the dividend. Here it is 5. Do remember, the size of the dividend matters the most in the implementation of the hardware for restoring division. Now, since it is of 5 bits, we are going to have a register of 10 bits which we will name D or R. Basically, we will first store the dividend in here and finally, we will get the remainder as a result out of it. Now, alongside this 10 bit register, we will have another 10 bit register named V. Here, we are going to place the divisor. Now, once we have acquired these two 10 bit registers, thereafter, we will need another 5 bit register which we will use to store the quotient. Now, alongside these three, we will need one adder subtractor, which will help us perform all the subtractions. Now, at the one end of the adder, we will feed the dividend and on the other end, we will feed the divisor. Now, the outcome of this adder subtractor will be updated in this particular register. However, before updating that, it has to go through a control, which will also decide how it will update the quotient. Now, in this particular register of 10 bits, in the least significant 5 bits, we will place the dividend and coming to the register V, we are going to place the divisor in the most significant 5 bits. 
Now in the remaining bit places, that is this place, this place and the bit places of Q, these will be initialized with zeros. Now the quotient in this particular register Q will be updated by performing left shifts and the updation will be dictated by this control. Coming to this particular register, here in every iteration we are going to shift the divisor towards the right. This is actually similar to what we have been doing in here. Observe, we have been shifting the divisor towards the right, haven't we? So the same thing we will perform in this particular register named V. Now let's learn about the control. Now the control will decide the updation of this DR register or the Q register based on the outcome of the error subtractor. Basically, if the result of the subtraction is negative, then we restore the contents of DR. Thereafter, we shift Q and update the LSB with zero. Let me explain. Consider this division. At the beginning, when we started off with 1, 1 and the dividend as 1 bit 1, at that time, we tried to perform the subtraction 1 minus 1, 1. Now, had this subtraction been performed, the result would have been negative. In that case, we would have to restore. And at the same time, we placed 0 in this place. Again, for this case, when we tried to perform the subtraction between 2 and 3, that is when we tried to consider these two bits of the dividend, at that time, had this subtraction been performed, in that case, the result would have been negative, and as a result, we would have to restore the dividend. And along with that, we also place 0 in here. Now in case of the Q register, we are going to perform shift left, that is everything will be shifted to the left and the LSB of Q, that is this particular bit, is going to be updated with zero whenever the result of the subtraction is negative. Now if the result of the subtraction is positive, in that case, we update the contents of DR, like in here. Since the subtraction was possible and we performed that and it is actually positive, and when this happened, the quotient for that was set to 1. Similarly, we will shift Q, that is the shift left of Q, and we will update the LSB with 1, which we did in here. Let's now observe how the operations will be performed. So at the first iteration, we are going to shift the entire content of the register V towards the right once. Now consider these bits and these bits. Observe. This is still greater than the dividend. So basically, if we perform the subtraction between these two, the result will be negative and we would have to restore the content of this particular register. And since the result would be negative, therefore, by the end of the first iteration, we will shift all these four bits towards the left in the register Q and the LSB will be updated with zero because the result of the subtraction would have been a negative value. Now during the second iteration, we get to shift the content of the V register towards the right one more time. Look at the content now. This is 10110 and this is 1100. So this is still greater than this one. So clearly, the subtraction between these two will result in a negative value, due to which we are going to restore the content of this one. And also, by the end of the second iteration, we will shift all these four bits towards the left and the LSB will again be updated with zero because the result of the subtraction was negative and we had to restore the content of the DR register. Now during the third iteration, we are shifting the entire content towards the right once more. Now look at the content of the dividend register and the divisor register. It is 10110 and it is 11 followed by 00. Now it is lesser than this one and we can perform the subtraction. Now the subtraction between this one and this one will actually result in this. That is 01010 which we will have in here. And since it is positive and how do we know that? Because if you remember in 2's complement representation, if we check the most significant bit place and if that is set to 1, then the entire result is negative. Otherwise, it is a positive. And since it is positive, by the end of the third iteration, all these four bits will be shifted towards the left and the LSB will be updated with 1 because the result was positive. Now coming to iteration 4, we are shifting the content of the V registers towards the rights once more. 
observe the content of dr is actually 1010 that is 10 and the content of v is 110 that is 6 now the subtraction is possible and the outcome of this subtraction is going to be 00100 that is this one so let's update the content of dr register and since it is positive therefore by the end of the fourth iteration we will shift all these bits towards the left in the queue register and the ls displays will be updated with one since the result of the subtraction was positive now during the last iteration that is the iteration number 5 as you can observe by shifting the entire content towards the right now we have positioned the divisor at the rightmost side of the v register and notice the content of the dr register it is 100 which is 4 and now the content of the v register is 11 which is 3 therefore the subtraction is possible and the result of which is going to be 1 so let's update that and since it is positive therefore by the end of the fifth iteration all these four bits will be shifted towards the left and the lsb of q is going to be updated with the value one now notice as a result of this division we are supposed to get 00111 as the quotient which we did in this particular register also we were supposed to get one as the remainder which we also obtained in this particular register. So this is how we implement the restoring division. So in this session, we observe the implementation of restoring division. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will learn how can we improve the hardware of the restoring division. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.